Our lab seems eerily quiet. <laughs> Are you the only one there, Amy? Leave if you can hear me. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Gary, I'm like going furiously to see if my headphones are turned up. I'm like, oh, did I send her on a wild goose chase? Yeah, okay, I think we're good now. Okay, cool. Did you get my that email? Good. Oh, there's Hershey. Why, hello. Hey. So we, we need to continue this show tune sort of conversation again <laughs> because, no, or, or, or uh, theatrical, you, because I grew up on that so much. My my mom and dad, when we were kids in England, belonged to uh, the London Operatic Society. Oh, and excellent. they were in all kinds of plays when we were kids and this and that. And they continued when we moved to uh, Denver when I was seven. Um, and uh, they were in all kinds of stuff. And the thing that uh, I, I was going to tell you is my they did a version of... Uh, What's the one with the uh, major generals? Uh, uh, Pirates of Penzance. Thank you. Well, Dad was one of the generals, and they got a write-up in, in the uh, Denver Post, which is the big paper out there, was at least at the time, if there are such a thing anymore. But um, they, were, they wrote this glowing review of the music and this and that, and they said one of the British officers, and they pointed my father out, um, uh, his accent was so over the top it was you know not to be believed kind of thing and he was the only my mom and he were the only real British people on the cast and my dad saved it he thought it was the greatest thing and he was like oh I was God, the only British so one there who had spoken where, where were your parents from David uh uh well long long answer my mom was born in Oxford England uh, yep. Dad, Dad was born in Gilgit, India, which is now Gilgit, Pakistan. But Dad was born on a military base because his uh, father was the uh, regent authority when Britain was still ruling India. Wow! Back in the day. Now you're dating and, yourself. Yeah. Well, well, that was that was my dad's parents. You know, mom just turned ninety-one, so I'm the youngest of my family. But uh, so then dad, uh, his parents passed away in a drowning accident and dad Ooh. went to school. They, they sent them back with family in England. And uh, so uh, they, they grew up, dad went to Oxford University, met mom. And uh, so they're from there. Two of my sisters were born in Scotland. My sister Allison and I were born in England. Mm -hmm. So we're, and two of my sisters moved back to England and two of us stayed here. Well, my my brother is an Oxford man, also. So. Oh, really? Which which university? Uh, is it King's College? Maybe is that sound King's? right? Kings, yeah, that's so. one. My dad He's was a New College man. Terry Eagleton. So I think I think that's where he was. I think. Okay. I don't know. I can't remember. I have it. I have my school scarf from there. So it's it's dark blue with like red and yellow stripes. If that if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> no, my 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 dad's university color was like this bright purple, and dad was colorblind, so it suited him fine. So, yeah, I can't bear with throwing away his old huge college scarf, but uh, but it's quite a color. But but yeah, dad uh, uh, dad was on the dad was on the Oxford rowing team, uh, and three of the years that he was on the team, they won head of the river, which is a big distinction in the rowing group yes. and uh, so i have in my upstairs uh three of my dad's oars from the three years that they won it that he was on it which was kind of cool including one of them has both my dad's they're, they're painted and in, in gold leaf and everything they're pretty cool they're need some rest uh restoring but uh they're cool but they're you know 14 feet long kind of thing so 
Um, but one of them has my dad's name and my uncle's name. Uh, even though they were seven years apart in age, they attended Oxford. They overlapped for one year because my uncle was in the RAF during World War II, and he was my dad's older brother. And dad never served, so huh. so they actually wow. went to meet. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Those two got to row together. This kind of cool. What's up? You know. Yeah. So. I have some some very cool family kind of history like that. And my dad wrote it all. My dad just loved history. So we go all the way back. Wow, oh, there are a lot of colleges. All right, oh, we're working on a quorum, folks. It was at St. Anthony's. That could have been it. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's at St. Anthony's. It was one of the newer there, there, ones that was in there's, there's a, quite a hmm? few. <laughs> there's quite yeah, a few. That must have been it. St. St. Anthony's. That's where he was, I think. Maybe he did King's College when he was at, when he did his master's at University of London. Maybe that was King's College. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't keep track of those degrees. Yeah. Well, last, last time I was I was in Oxford was a, a few years ago with my wife and we were visiting my sister and my relatives who live up that way. And Oxford University was just crammed with tourists. I mean, it was just with buses and this. I mean, yeah. it was, you know. Well, you know. It's pretty there was cool. there was like more cameras and baseball caps than there were students on campus. It was just it was quite you could tell who was a student and who wasn't because they were all nicely dressed. <laughs> so <laughs> the students that way is not the not the not the riff raff. All right, are we all here? Everybody but Betsy and. Um, Brunel's on his way. So on his way. We're just waiting for Betsy. School board meeting. Okay. Um, are we expecting Ken tonight? Yeah. He, can you guys see him? Is he oh, there? Oh, there he is. Yes. Oh, He's sort of okay. in the top strip of your, uh, the very top strip of your screen. Oh. I see. Oh, I, I got gotcha. you. Go. The owl thing is really hard to see. It's yeah. good, but. It just is hard to see everybody. Yeah. Yeah, if you take it out of gallery view and someone's speaking, it's e it's easier, but oops. How did I get 19M? Probably. Where is our cheerwoman here? I know maybe she did. Let me see if she's texted trying to get on or something. All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Here you are, Maya. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know why, like, sometimes it stays my name and sometimes it doesn't. I don't get it. Uh, okay, are we the only two on video tonight? Or, oh, Jess is here. She's on video. Yeah, no, Greg is on video. Oh, they're, yeah, they're here. Oh, there's they're, Greg. Okay. Yeah, it looks like their connection dropped off, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boys. Is Amy? Amy must be Yeah, getting they're, they're the both there. They're just trying to reconnect. Oh. Okay. That's good. So, so sadly, I got COVID. Oh no! Really? No. Yeah, I no idea, no idea, and I'm the only one in the house that got it. Like my husband didn't get it, my kids didn't get it. I don't understand how that happened. Other than that, we're all they're vaccinated. I am too, though. You know, but whatever. It wasn't hmm. too bad, but I was out all last week with it. Came down. Oh. With, um. Yeah. So, but I'm all better now. I'm out of my ten day. Ten day. Oh. Time. But. What an, huh. ordeal. what an ordeal. I mean, so we have an eight-year-old and two six-year-olds and 
you know, like I'm isolating in a room. Good luck. But six-year-old doesn't know what that is exactly. Did everybody get tested in your household? Yeah. So they all get tested at school anyways. Oh. Um, and then my, I think my husband was tested four times and oh. every time negative. And then he tested negative again this past Monday. And yeah. So yeah, right. just me, but it was really, I mean, it was really mild. It was more like I was just really tired and I had a sore throat for a few days, but well, yeah. Glad you're better. It's over though. It feels like a hundred pounds lifted off my shoulders. You know, cause you like, you worry. I've been worrying for two years. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, now you have some immunity for a while. So that's good. That's right. I know. I, I, I was saying, I'm going to do all the things. I have 90 days to do all the things. <laughs> I'm going to go to the movies. I'm going to go out to dinner. <laughs> Just do what I can. All right. Yep. Okay. Is Amy, so Amy is She's back. Hi, Ken. Yeah. Amy's under Owl Labs, you know, the, the city hall one. So she's back. Oh, she's back. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Did we ask Ken to say something? Because it looks like Owl Labs is muted right now. There was that same problem earlier. Oh, yep. Yeah. It is it is muted. Figured out, Amy. <laughs> Voila. Ken? Okay. There we go. There you go. Awesome. Well, let's see. It is 7.04 p.m. So I'll call our meeting to order. It is Wednesday, February 2nd. Is that right? Oh, my gosh. Um, so I will take a roll. Who's here? Hershey Hirschkop. Here. Greg Zinser. Here. Ken yes. Conley. Yes. Um, yes. Manly Gove is not here. And oh. um, I'm here, Betsy Randall. There's four of us. Um, and then I did receive an email from Burnell, our new um, uh, alternate. And he will be here in about 15 minutes. So he will technically be um, an active voting member this evening as soon as he arrives. Um, is point of, point of order? What do we if we have a quorum, which is three, do we then do alternates get on to make it five or do we have to vote that alternates get to then participate and have a vote? Because I think we have to agree Amy. To vote. vote. In here, David. <laughs> the bylaws require if we're short a member, the chair can essentially activate one of the alternates. Short so a member, we, short of five. Yeah, it says if someone's out, mm -hmm. the bylaws say the the chair can allow an alternate to become a member for the evening. So that probably should be, yeah. you know, formalized right. in the evening minutes. Right. Right. So, uh, Dave, were you trying to say so something? I, oh. No, I was going to agree with you and just say that that I guess when uh, when he shows up, we will uh, say welcome to the planning board and you're it. But we are. I don't think there's any action tonight. Is there that we uh, that the board is actually going to vote on? Oh, we need we need to do the uh, bylaws second readings. Um, you could take things out of well, never mind. Um. Could, might I suggest that maybe we go through the uh, the first part of the meeting and then maybe uh, until uh, the uh, alternate shows up and then maybe start from the bottom so we could set uh, with uh, discussion items from number five up so we could set a date for Christy Rabaska and then maybe do the bylaws because that the new member wouldn't be able to vote anyway. Yeah. But That's a great idea. Actually, let's um, for so first, I'm just going to ask if there's anybody here from the public that has anything to talk about tonight that is not on the agenda. Hearing and seeing no one. Um, can we let's just start with approving the minutes that Amy put out. Um, 
Did everybody get a chance to review that or does anybody need a minute? I'm good. I'll, I'll move the minutes of uh, uh, January 5th, I think was our that first one. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Do, do we recall, or I, I'm sure, sorry, Amy, but who was at that meeting and who voted? Do we, I wanna make sure that people are on these two meetings who were at the meeting actually vote? Yeah, I'm bringing up. I, I, I should have. I'm I bringing up the meeting minutes right right now, David. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, with all the board changes, I just want to make sure that we have the right folks that we have a that you have enough of a quorum to actually pass those minutes. Yes, we do for uh, for the January fifth one. We do. Okay. Yep. So, um, yes, it is January fifth, Greg. I'll take a second. Is there a second? A second. To any discussion? Hearing none, a vote. Hershey Hirschkop? Aye. Greg Zinser? Yes. Uh, Ken, you were there. I, I was here. And Ken Randall, aye. So that's that's um, accepted for zero. And then the other one is from January 19th. And it looks like we also have enough people. So I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes from January 19th. So move. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Vote Hershey Hirschkop. Aye. Greg Zinser. Yes. Ken Conley. Yes. And myself, I, Betsy Randall. So that passes for zero. Those minutes. If only everything was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so hearing, uh, if there's no objections, I will jump down to number five and set the date with Amy, uh, with Amy regarding the meeting with Christy Rabaska. Amy, do you? Uh... I just need to just set a date so I can let her know. I was kind of hoping we could do it on uh, March 16th. Ooh. Okay. I might be on vacation. March second or April uh, April sixth. I'd be down for April sixth. I would. Uh, by me. Well, how long is that? I mean, what's the? I mean, April sixth works. It's a night of a meeting. I it's think. literally yeah. We'd only do it on a, a night of the meeting. It's just ten to fifteen minutes. Okay. Um, about the MS4 permit for this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the six works for me. I mean, I'll be here. Thank you, Doke. Okay, right, set. Awesome. Do you, uh, want, should we do have you want a motion for that? Gonna, yeah, can oh, I have a motion? We don't need to. Okay. We just need to set the date. We don't need a motion. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Um, Number four, the planning board bylaw amendment, the second reading of chapter A148-2, officers, the elimination of annual election of the planning board secretary. Um, let me I move we pass. Do we need to read it? Well, I can make a motion to dispense with the reading and uh, accept it as presented. Excellent, go for it. Just did. Second. <laughs> second, second. second. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Hershey Hirschkop. Aye. Greg Zinser. Yes. Ken Conley. Yes. And myself, Betsy Randall. Aye. That um, passes for zero. Amy, that's for. That one was for uh, chapter um, one forty dash two for officers. Yeah, I need to bring up. I don't know where my agenda went. I just had it up. Oh, yeah, chapter A one four eight dash two officers. The elimination of the planning board secretary. And then the next one is the planning board bylaws amendment, second reading of the chapter A one four eight regular meetings. Update meeting language to reflect current changes. Go, Greg. I'll move that we dispense with the reading of A148 dash what? <laughs> A, there is no dash. 
Okay. I'll three. Move there. That's three. Dispense with the second reading of chapter A148, uh, reflecting. Dash three. Dash three. Is it dash? Yeah. On the agenda doesn't say it. Okay. So it let, is. Me, let me start over. So <laughs> move that we dispense with the second reading of A148 dash three, reflecting the time change for the planning board. I second. Have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, Hershey Hirschkopf? Aye. Greg Zinser? Yes. Ken Conley? Aye. Jesse Randall, aye. So that passes 4-0. The chapter A148 regular meetings update the meeting language to reflect current changes. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. OK. Well, so okay. technically, since we're going from the bottom up, Number two, continue the review of the 12-29-2021 Town Council memo regarding the planning board charge of the solar farm ordinance slash performance standards. Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter which of these, I was just hoping that by the time uh, we had gotten to these two items, so if the board has a preference between hitting number one or number two, which is the uh, uh, medical marijuana uh, registered as a home occupation, or we could go straight into solar farm ordinance performance standards. It does not matter to me. Does anybody else on the board have a preference? No. No. Okay, Ken? Okay. Uh, let's just do solar farm then. Let's do solar farm. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, Brunel is here now. Oh, oh. hello. Hello. Perfect timing. Um, now, is there a way, I don't know, Burnell, if, I think if you introduce yourself and start talking, the owl will move to you so he can see you. <laughs> Would you like to say a few things about yourself? Okay, uh, sorry here. Yeah, Burnell Bailey, I live out on Hoopa Sands Road. Okay, uh, did it swing around? There, there it goes. Go. There oh, goes. there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I live out on Super Hooper Sands Road and uh, 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 just came on board, of course, as you know, just a couple weeks ago, and uh, uh, just uh, trying to get uh, geared up and uh, spun up uh, with some of the issues that are going on here. Great. Well, welcome. Uh, because we have four members here tonight, one is missing. Um, you are an active member of tonight's board in terms of voting. If you so choose, you can abstain. Um, I agree. I just abstain at this point. Uh, I understand you have a quorum with the four. Yes, we Actually, do. Sorry, sorry. For, point of motion, Betsy, yep. maybe. Sorry, the items that are on the agenda tonight, they're discussion items. They are really on the, on the agenda for me to get feedback from the board on these two ordinance amendments. Okay. So even as an altern uh, alternate member, uh, participation is encouraged. So, you know, all members should be participating, including new ones. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Burnell. Thank you. Solar farms? So let's do solar farms. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's do solar farms. Let's do solar farms. David, um, did you, had you collected some points? Yeah, well, I, I sent you the memo, correct? Yes. Did everyone like, get yep. it? Yes. All right. So, um, you know what? I'll sh how about I share my screen? So Perfect. Is, Thank you. <laughs> how about this is the latest and greatest? Hold on. I've got, <laughs> oh, geez, look how much crazy time. stuff I have open today. Oh, no, For the love of God, here we are. Okay. Well, there's a, there we are. Sorry, there's a photograph. Can you see that now? It does not let me see if, if you're yes. seeing what I'm seeing. Yep. Okay. Moving okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I sent a, this is disturbing seeing myself too. So uh, actually you can't see it. Um, in any event. So if you recall, uh, the, the town council assigned the, uh, the planning board the task of reviewing solar arrays, solar farm uh, type projects. And as such, they gave the planning board a list of items that they really wanted to uh, the board to take a look at 
and those I included in my memorandum. Hopefully everyone got that. But those items were glare mitigation, view disruption, property value in, uh, impacts, decommissioning process, conservation impacts, and then any new definitions or any new amendments throughout the uh, zoning ordinance that the board uh, thought necessary from this new thing. So uh, what I did is I tried to go through the various documents that uh, solar farms would already have to comply with. So the various performance standards. So we, thought, uh, we create, or I started to create a new uh, performance standard section for solar farms, which is this 140-67.2. That's just the next number in special uh, performance standards for special uses. They would also be required to uh, 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 get site plan approval. And so there's the site plan approval reference in the memorandum. I included a link to that. And then there are also performance standards for all uses. So there's a number of different code uh, areas. So I try to include those to make it all uh, as easy uh, as, as possible. The other thing uh, that's really important to point out is table A, which is a land use table uh, at the beginning of the code is a, is a ordinance uh, section that says, these uses are allowed in these districts and within those districts, these are the reviews that they have to go. It may just be, you're allowed to do it. It may be uh, a code officer has to approve it, or it may be you come before the planning board to get site plan approval or use approval. And so we have uh, in, in town seen a couple of, of solo projects come through and those were uh, listed as uh, how they were treated or determined before was land uses under a public utility. And that includes sewer collections and treatment facilities. And as you can see by the MSP, that represents major site plan approval. So they have to go through the major site plan approval process. And these, all of these various processes, I, I, I should clarify, they go through a approval process with the planning board, but, um, they have to meet the standards of each of the ordinance that may apply for that particular use. Sorry if I'm over explaining that, but I know we had some oh. new folks. So can we can we stop there actually? Can we Please. like just take off that chunk to discuss for a second before we go on? Is it can we take it sort of chunk by chunk as you explain it, Dave? Instead of oh, sure, it? sure. Okay. okay. Otherwise I forget by the time we, you know what I <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, I'm that old. <laughs> okay, so so let's talk about the uh, land use table A. Is that okay? We start yeah. there? Yes. Okay, Ta uh, table A regulates, uh, regulates the land uses within each zoning district. Currently, solar farms have been treated as a public utility and it calls out in the land use code and this document that I'm showing here is just cut and paste straight out of the town's land use code. And so that land use, it was determined that it was a public utility and and it says public utilities, sewer collection slash treatment facilities. So it was taken through this major site plan approval. So one of the questions is, as a definition, should these uses be specifically named in the zoning ordinance and regulated as such, rather than just saying, oh, you're a public utility, are there other things, maybe you know, cellular towers, for example, are taken out of the ordinance. Um, so that's one issue to come up. So um i gave an overview of the table a and again we're reviewing at this level as a public utility so what i tried to do is i gave you the entire zoning definition of a of a as of a public uh, excuse me as a public utility is any firm person uh, any person firm corporation municipal development board or commission authorized to furnish gas, steam, electricity, waste disposal, communication facilities, transportation, or water to the public. So now, uh, so the question really that I pose to the, to the board as we go through is, do solar farms fall under this? And if so, do we need to specifically call them out in this definition or should they have their own definition within the land use code. So on that, um, 
I looked at a like definition ordinance of what a solar farm is and ground mounted solar relay uh, uh, solar array facilities is an installation or area of land in which a large number of solar panels are set up in order to generate electricity. I mean, to me, it sort of might as well, I mean, for us not to have a definition of even what a solar farm is, I thought that's maybe an oversight, but, or you consider it a public utility, keep the current definition, and then you don't need to mess with the new utility. That's really direction from the board. If we do have a new definition for solar farm, the next real question becomes, where is it allowed? And that's a little bit bigger nut to crack because what things does the board want to look at um, rather than just saying, okay, they're in the R3 zone or whatever, they're allowed to do it out there. Should the board be looking at maybe other environmental things? Like, is there some really major environmental areas, which we know there are in town? Should we look at that too? And, and again, that was that was brought up. I, I have talked about uh, uh, these actually earlier today. Hershey and I had a conversation about it. So that's you know a question. Do, do we need to put this out? And do we need to over really look into the land use? And while we're thinking about it, do we move that into also the conference and plan when that time comes? So okay, a Hershey. lot of things to think of. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, David. Hershey, go ahead. Um, so I guess I don't think of it as a public utility because a lot of these are private. So I'm not sure if the public part is supposed to mean for the public good or it's really, because it does say a corporation or firm, I guess, could own it or authorize it. But I don't, I don't think that's what's intended by that passive. So I think we should move it out of that. And also that gives them a pass at a bunch of stuff that I don't, I don't think we should. So, you know, whether they're adding to the grid and we love clean energy, they're not, I don't, I don't think of them as a public utility, I guess. And I think we should then create a different definition. And I think the definition you came up with, David, should distinguish between sort of a few panels people put up for their own home use and these much bigger ones that are, you know, owned by a corporation, um, either on leased or owned land, and um, then are linked directly to the grid in a different way, I guess, or and have a certain, yeah. And I think Greg can probably articulate this better than I can because he and I have had some discussions. So, so I, I think there's a couple of key questions that we need to frankly answer first and figure out what the board wants to do. And that will really set the stage for how the ordinance is ultimately developed. I, I do agree. I think the definition is really, uh, you know, of a, the public utility right now, I, I really don't believe that that contemplated, you know, solar farms at this point. So I, I really don't see solar farms that we're seeing popping up uh, being a public utility. I think it is a firsthand experience with them. I think that it is a commercial enterprise and really should be reviewed and regulated as such. Uh, so I would advocate that we look at this as not being a public utility. And then really, as you suggested, Dave and Hershey, really look into where these would be allowed. And I think we're gonna be getting and, and having to start looking at maps and relation to you know, all the typical vernal pools, conservation areas, wetlands, and, and really understand where these things could even be situated in this town. Uh, and just kind of go through it a methodical process. So, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't see this as a, a public utility. I think it's really far from it. I'm not gonna say they're good or bad. I just think that they're just not a public utility. Um, okay, Can, uh, while we're uh, on the subject, is, is that a consensus of the board currently? Uh, or I, I, mean, it's, no. I, I was just thinking if, if the board, I, I'd like to hear from the, uh, from the new members actually too and figure out if there's you know where the board wants to push this because if it's if we put its own category in it, it's we can place it in the ordinance wherever we want but that's it's a real distinction to see if people are on board where with just the question is is this a public utility or should it be a standalone definition if we're just talking definitions 
do have a question here concerning that. Yes. It, these sections we're talking about here, are these these town ordinances? Yes. Okay, are these town, and then these definitions, are they town definitions or do they come from either state or some other agency mm -hmm. or whatever? Are these like standard uh, uh, definitions across the state or country? Um, the the we made up. the definitions that the town currently has. Well, they just let's take these two that you have right here. This uh, of utilities, and then this definition for solar pumps. Okay. Are those, are those definitions that we made up here, and that's what we go with, or do they come from some standard thing that the state has and their utility regulation the, and the country or whatever? The, these currently can I, can I screen share again? Yes. Okay. All right. In the uh, Whoops. Can you see? Is that coming up? Yep. Okay. So this definition, uh, if you can see this, this definition that I have right in front of me here, can you see that? This definition for a public utility is taken straight from the town's definition section of their land use code or the zoning ordinance. So this okay. comes out of actually chapter 140-9 definitions. So that is a town, a, a town definition. Where that originally originated, um, I am not certain. Okay, that was, that's fine, yeah. Okay, okay. now the, okay. The, the town's zoning ordinance does not have a different definition for solar farms or whatever they want to call them. So the definition that I placed here is just one that I, I, I looked up and it was a definition for a solar farm that I happen to like it. I think it might have even been from Webster's or uh, Oxford English or, or something, but I, I thought it was a, a good definition. If the board wanted that new definition in there, I thought this was a good starting place. Okay, so it sounds like we can manipulate these definitions at will here almost. Yes. Correctly. Uh, co correctly. <laughs> Correct. Um, but any changes that we make to these definitions uh, do have to uh, basically be put in a draft form for town council review and approval okay. to be changed in the actual land use code. Thank you. So all of the, all of the amendments that I have and that I've referred to in my original memorandum are all sections from the zoning ordinance. And the document that I said has links to those. So it's chapter 140. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ken, Ken, do you have anything? I do actually. Uh, okay. If you could scroll, if you could scroll back down just a little bit. There we go. Um, oh, 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 too much. Section six. All right. So okay. Paragraph. There you go. <laughs> uh, so more or less to differentiate, I've looked into some of this for some of the properties we have. Um, uh, if you're looking under any person, firm, corporation, your civil department blah, 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 to the public, to the public. So are we stating that as in like the state of Maine's community solar program where you're, you're resailing to, to uh, it's kind of a, kind of a mixed up bag where you're, you're marketing your own credits back to other people. So there is actually commerce involved. Could we define that as a public utility and then the private person say myself, I have solar panels. I would then fall under solar farms, ground mounted arrays, blah, 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 of private. Would we have two lines for that? I think that was more or less what Hershey may have been speaking of before. Yeah, and, and one of the things uh, uh, Greg had emailed me this week, and one of the things that I was hoping to pull together for the board tonight, uh, hopefully I can hit that tomorrow, was uh, I've done a number of these solar farms in different communities, and most of them have been basically about 20 acres of developed area, give or take. But I thought if I compared the size of the actual lot area that they were using, uh, and I could give you some examples, but sort of say, here's the actual development area, here's how much power they were producing, and here's what they need. Because the most important thing that any uh, of these 
uh, solar farms are going to be looking for is how they can connect to the grid most directly. So that's something to, to, to keep in mind. But I, I was going to pull, pull together some of these uh, numbers so at least the board could look at it and go, we're not talking about, uh, maybe we need to clarify the, the definition, but um, when this was sent to the board, it was sent as a commercial enterprise. So someone doing about 20 acres of, of solar farm, active solar farms. So this isn't for your house. This is like to power a city or a town. Um, kind of thing. So there are differences, and I don't so think were, that the, the planning board wants to get into regulating people who are just doing small things at their home on their roofs. For you're, you're selling something back to the company or other parties yeah. involved. If you'd be able to define it with that alone, rather than the business owner that has 10 acres covered supplying his shop on his own, there would be yeah. a different line and, and actually taxes involved as well, I'd imagine. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, Hershey. So, um, and Ken, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand and dig in a little more. I, I think really, you know, in terms of zoning and solar farms, it really just has to do with the impact on sort of everybody around you more than a lot of other things. And, um, you know, you get to do what you want in your own land within reason, right? And then we turn to zoning to make sure we all could live together. So, I, I think it might be more about. Um, size than it is about, you know, use. So say you built a 20 acre solar farm for your own use. To me, that wouldn't be like a few panels that you're using for yourself. So maybe what it really comes down to is, I don't know, maybe we define it as acreage more than other things. Um, but, you know, it might, it, we could get into I don't know, very weird territory, I guess, if we said it has to be for your home use versus a corporation who comes in to lease land or build it themselves and tie it into the grill and is just making money off of that. And um, I, I'm not sure what to think about that. I'd have to give that a lot more thought, I guess. It's very, I, yeah. I mean, to keep the hands tied of the corporations and then and, and allow you well, I, I, you know, everybody gets fair use and I'm not, I, everybody I think here probably would agree that clean energy is really important and, and encouraging solar farms is important until of course, you know, we have 20 of them in our town, right? And so um, we can't zone them out of existence and I don't think that's fair, nor should we, nor do we want to. But I also think, you know, like everything we want to do, we want to make sure we've thought wisely about where they can go with the least impact on everybody else, right? So, um, and I'll get into this next bit that there's a tool at Maine Audubon that they put together that maps all of Maine. And it's, it's supposed to, it has layers and it's to be used for towns figuring out where to site solar farms of this, these big solar farm types. So um, it means somebody has to decide to go through the map zone by zone because it points out, you know, vernal pools and you know, watershed areas and waterways and setbacks. And you can, you get to the point where you can say, here are the, you know, in each zone, here's, here are plots of land that would be appropriate. And then we have to decide if there's a size limit, if there are, you know, a lot of it, a lot of these performance standards, David hit spot on, I think are already in place, but there's still a lot to sort of sort through. And um, I don't know if David is the person or you want a little subcommittee of the planning board to look at this tool that they have or if that's the one we should even use, but that's sort of where I'm heading is trying to just figure out instead of having them like come in with their plan and they can go in any single district in town, except for some reason R5, I don't understand that at all, but you know, we can already say, we know we don't want them here, here and here, don't even bother because it's, you know, environmentally sensitive or it's too dense or, Right. So I'd rather do that work up front and then limit where they're allowed to, to go as opposed to waiting for them to come in. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just looking at the document um, for for a, a minute back to um, performance standards and specific uses in the table land use. Um, you know, I. I totally see both sides of the coin in terms of if it's a public utility or if it's a private, you know, commercial, you know, there's so much profit to be had in solar. 
at the same time, we are going to rely <laughs> on these people if we are transitioning out of gas and oil. And I just, I, so I'm, I'm torn in terms of if it should be a public utility for the, in that sense. But on the other hand, I feel like solar is its own, is its own beast. I mean, you're not, you don't have 20, you know, sewer districts in a town. You're not going to have the demand for that. You're not going to have the demand for, you know, 10 water treatment facilities. And for that reason, I think for the, for really the profit and the, mon the monetary gains and the demand the electric, I mean, I feel like we do have to limit in some way, shape or form. And I don't know if I believe that it's going to be by zone or if it's going to be based on like an Audubon map. Um, but I think, I think that we need to at least look at how can we, how can we limit the numbers, but limit them based on, you know, like Hershey said, you know, what's going to be the least impactful to, you know, our wetlands and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I think that for me, I would need a little more thought in, into that. Um, but I'm definitely, I would really like to see the main Audubon map. And I don't know if Hershey, that's something you could send to Amy that Amy could distribute. No, no, it's, it's an online, it's an online um, application. So you go to the, you go to main Audubon and there's something you click on and it's an interactive G, I think it's a GIS or an ARC, it's two different programs, map of some kind that you can turn layers on and off and, and look through, but it's meant as a tool to help towns figure out where to put solar. And they probably still have a recording. It was like that one hour webinar that a few of us went to explaining what it does and how to use it. So you could always watch that too. Okay, so could um, Amy, do you know where that webinar is or the link is to it? I don't, but I'll find it. I can, you, I can send you something, Amy. I think I probably still have it knowing me, so. Yeah, just, just whatever it is that it gets, it needs, Amy needs to send it out. Um, so it's part of public record and that everybody, everybody can have it and look at it. Um, I definitely would like to see two separate definitions. Um, because when you're looking at, you know, some homes like my own, I cannot get enough solar on my roof. If we were to do any more solar, it'd have to be a ground, a ground type of thing. And I, I would just hate for that, for that one word, like a ground array to be, you know, taken out of context. Like if somebody doesn't have the roof and they have to put it in their, you know, on their 20 acres, right? you know, like five panels, you know, I just, I just want to make sure that we're, that we're not putting anything too ridiculous um, in terms of that, like giving people, giving people opportunities to be able to at least um, get enough electric to cover their own. Um, but I think that uh, having a look at the zoning map and really seeing what each of these going through and looking in the in our book, in our book, and seeing exactly what each of the zones is meant for, what its purpose is, and what it's supposed to be used for, is going to give us a good idea of um, maybe if there are certain zones that just it makes sense to say no. Um, that is all for me, Greg. So uh, a couple <clears throat> thoughts, you know, the maybe would there needs to be a discussion and and I'm going to ask Ken a question in a minute so I can better understand what what he's saying again I don't believe these are a public utility and if we start to get into you know looking to restrict them in certain areas then they're going to have to it's going to we're going to have to create its own separate use category because we're just by us saying that whether we say it's a public utility or not at this point, if we're talking about restricting it in certain zones, we're, we have to create its own separate use because that's going to deviate from table A. So 
we're going to we're going to have to do that and and I think the mapping is important there um but I just kind of have a question so I can understand better Ken if you don't mind explaining are you is your concern between like a commercial enterprise and a and a residential application is that your your concern well the wording under public utility would would more or less infer that it is being sold out to the public like the community solar program for maine you're selling it out to other people you're selling off your credits you generate credits with your panels you don't they don't actually pay you above and beyond zero so you're selling off your credits to other parties for for a fee so that technically is a small version of a public utility so it could fall under it if you're selling outbound rather than as betsy said five panels on her 20 acres where it is her own but as i understand it uh the individual right now is covered by the standards we have in place so there is building permit and all kinds of red tape for the individual to jump through anyway so we have two different things happening i just didn't want to see it lumped together i thought that's what Parrish was speaking of and, and that well was... I, I i so they're they're and I'm going to be talking really kind of in no particular order because it's just kind of you know coming to me as we sit here and talk. So I think we may want to learn, Dave. You know, we talked, I think someone mentioned the solar farms are really being here in town are really being kind of pushed or brought on by the what I'm going to call again, th these are my own words, the more of the commercial application, those looking to connect to the grid at the five megawatts or larger. And so that's to me is really the impetus. And there's a couple different things when it comes to those commercial type of applications. It's the net energy billing credits, as well as what I call the carbon offset credits. And it's a big business. Uh, and so those types of applications aren't generally available to homeowners to a degree. Uh, they're really kind of bought in by a conglomerate and many entities form together to buy into this. Uh, and again, I look at that, it's a really a commercial enterprise because it, it's, it's, it's commercial. People are making money. I don't fault them for doing it at all. Um, but I just go back and look at, you know, the definition and when the definition was probably put in, you know, I look at that as really the conveyance of utilities within the public way for the public benefit of everybody. Um, and I'm not so sure the solar does that at this point in time. So maybe we need to look at, is there a distinction that needs to be made here uh, between what we'll call large scale and what we'll call small scale? And is there, you know, is there a difference? I don't, I don't know. You know, if I were to put some in in my small back piece of land can i hook up to the grid and 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 get a credit that way probably am i opposed to people doing that not necessarily um but i think as you start getting into a certain size we really need to start being aware of that and looking at the performance standards and what that does and you know, again, getting into the glare and, and, and environmental impacts. So I don't know, I, I'm not really sure how to go on this. I, I was really looking at it from, the, you know, not a public utility being five megawatts or more, which is a very sizable, uh, you know, investment. Um, and I think if we're talking about moving them or not allowing them in certain areas, then then we need to be creating a completely separate use and then deciding in what zones they go in. So I think it's going to end up not being a public utility just based on where I kind of hear this going and, you know, going to be down to size and zones. And I, I don't, I guess I don't understand enough either can on the smaller scale stuff. I, I don't have experience with that to really comment. Really, it comes down to where we want to draw the line, as you're saying. If it's five megawatt, then it, it honestly seems like there's more than one thing. So five megawatt seems like it's a very commercial. And then the community solar is, is somebody with a large property selling outbound. 
credits and then there is the individual off grid like myself who, who does not generate anything outside of their own home so we we have many buckets here of a similar thing that is not nearly similar uh david do you feel after our conversation that you could confidently come up with a couple <laughs> definitions that describe the different types of solar farms that we're talking about yeah, I well, how about I, I can provide you information and possible suggestions for different definitions by size and things like that. And that should be one of the starting points was going to be looking at the ones that have come through area communities and uh, South Berwick itself, really seeing what we what we've used. And then from there, you could look at, OK, this is really a commercial use and this is how much area it took up. This person is a, you know, you're, you're putting up five panels, for example, or you're covering your barn roof or whatever. So I could probably come up with some examples on that. But from what I was hearing, it sounds like we do need some definitions that the board all wants those definitions in there. And I wasn't hearing anything contrary to at least the, so far as, as far as the suggestions that I had made as far as what items may be regulated or not. So I know I'll, we'll need to add a section on size, definitions, size, and we'll have to modify the land use table at this point. Right, unless we decide, unless we decide that we want solar farms to be separate from a public utility, correct? Mm -hmm. I thought that was sort of the inkling. I know. I I would I would <laughs> prefer I would prefer to approach this with with various, you know, motions and approvals throughout the process so we can kind of like so we can get through it, but you know, looking there's no way we're going to like get through everything tonight, but I mean, I would love I would love if someone wanted to make a motion regarding whether or not solar farms was a separate entity from public utilities because I, because you think I, that there is a general agreement can we do that is, yeah is i just it? want to make sure we we i don't know if we want to take any kind of i the consensus that i was hearing is that it was going to be a separate category a solar farm would be a separate definition and a separate land use and start Correct. going through it that way and, Correct. and but as I, wanna, I go, I want to, sorry, I just want to clarify between all the members because I can't necessarily see Ken and Burnell and, <laughs> and I would, I would like to know everybody's opinions on it as to whether or not they agree uh, mm -hmm. that that's a direction to go in. So is it, yeah, I mean, you can sort of, if anyone objects to me taking that route, maybe that's the easiest I just want a consensus from the board that we're heading in the right direction on this thing. And, you know, maps and, and, and what have you, and that kind of layering will, will, will have to come. But the first real decision, are they, are they separate from a public utility? And I, my inkling is, yes, they are, from what I've heard from the board. And then perhaps what I can do is sort of next time go through and sort of say, okay, here's something that we need to you know, I can highlight some of those items, like here's three different definitions for three different sizes of this type of use. Here's a normal household use, here's this, here's that. Um, it's very possible uh, that I could nag Joe and uh, there's probably already some good definitions in the, in the building codes for some of these things uh, or, you know, building electric codes kind of thing. So I, I'll touch base with Joe and see what he can uh, contribute on that too for the so, next meeting but i guess i'm looking at the key too and you know we have the different definitions and how how do you create <laughs> do we have to have a have a different a different line for each kind does that make sense like are we gonna have to have like the solar farm commercial and then the ends where they need to go, the wise where they need to go. They would do, say, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, you'd need definitions yes. for each one. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> we would need to create we could potentially create like three or four lines is what you're saying based right. on but but the, as far as the commercial uses you could have i don't care five different uses of different solar farms you know you put up a reflector on your mailbox and that's a solar farm but you can go i mean you can get to that kind of ridiculousness but i think we need to have that that cutoff for okay really this is you know if you're putting in 20 acres full of uh of solar panels you're not generating uh energy for your house you're selling it to the grid so then we're talking about just two definitions or two mm -hmm. separate definitions mm -hmm. and so we we would have we could have two lines so that the land use is different for each correct and the one that the board could focus on you could have a definition for something that we're not totally regulating you could say this is right you know home as long as we have an ordinance spelling out how large they can go you can that authority can be granted already as it probably already is through the building code so the code officer would regulate sort of someone just put you putting panels on your house or on your barn kind of thing when you're getting into the commercial type thing so we can have two different definitions but only one that the board is interested in regulating, which is these large commercial okay. ones. Okay. Okay. Uh, Greg? Yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to limit ourselves to just two definitions right now. I, I, I guess as I listen to Ken and listen to the other conversation at this point, I, I really can kind of see maybe three, maybe four different definitions uh, coming to fruition for part of this conversation. And I think I think in, in part of this is going to be as we, you know, move, move, move on in this, I think without, without saying it, I think we're all probably agreeing that this needs to be not considered a public utility if we're going down the road of, hey, there's different applications. And that by us talking about that, that's going to force the changes to table A and make it not a public utility. Now, at the end of the day, we can just put Ys all across if that's what we want to do and give it the same right, so to speak, as a public utility. But, you know, from a from the commercial standpoint, I think there needs to be some limitations. But then there's going to be a lot of applications personally that you should be allowed to do by right. So there would be just a bunch of Ys and you can be able to do that on your home in certain acreages or whatever uh, that, you know, I don't think we should really get involved in. And as long as the standards are there, you know, should be able to be approved by the code office. So I really do see a, a completely this being pulled out of, or just, I'm not going to say being pulled out of the public utility because it's arguable whether or not it's even in there to begin with. So I think we just need to create a brand new set of definitions, you know, two, three or four definitions and maybe tie it to different sizes and different, really different uses. Cause I think if I'm hearing Ken correctly, that sounds like a different use than, you know, these commercial five megawatt type things. So there are different uses and maybe we need to look at that and explore that. So that's kind of where I would, I guess that's, that's what I'm looking at. And I think, but, but that being said, the rest of the actual standards are not bad. You know, I think it's just this really this overarching, how do we define them and in, in what zone is really the bigger issue? Yeah. And, and there, oh, go ahead, Hershey. Sorry, I just, I just wanna point out that, I, you know, we're not here to restrict them <laughs> as much as we're here to discuss sort of good zoning, right? So I, my goal isn't to like, you know, narrow how many we have. I just don't wanna see, I mean, I'll admit, I don't wanna see 40 in our town or maybe even 20, and I don't wanna see them take over. But I also feel like this is an exercise in what we should be doing, which is sort of like, you know, figuring out where things go and what's appropriate. And as a public utility, it sort of has carte blanche to go anywhere it wants. And that's part of the issue for me, right? That's why I agree with Greg and Betsy that, you know, maybe, you know, we should be thinking about it differently. That's all, so. I apologize that wording was not, so you are correct. I, I shouldn't use quite that wording, restricting them. <laughs> I don't want to restrict no, them. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, it's, you know, I've been on the planning board three years and I'm still learning what I should say. So, you know, I got you. <laughs> it's complex. It's complex. complex. Um, and, and the board members 
are allowed to individually call me or email me or, or whatever if there's something that's not clear or there's some research traditionally, you know, uh, you know, Greg had said, well, had started asking questions about the sizes and what kind of power generated, which I think is a really good place to start. Um, that and some definitions and maybe round that out and uh, you know just chip away the other the other items but i think some maybe looking at maps and uh, maybe everyone visiting that audubon site i have not had a chance to uh, uh, to look at that myself either but i think i have at least a little something to go on for for the next for the next meeting if, if the board wants to move on from this subject maybe touch on the next ordinance or yeah, I mean, unless I think, you want me to do some more sort of background stuff on this, but no, I, I mean, I think that it would be great for us to, you know, have some time in the before our next meeting to go over maps and the zoning. What's, you know, what are the purposes of each of the zones? Yes, Hershey. So I'm sorry, you can finish. You can, you oh, can oh. finish, and then then I'll go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, and you know, tackle maps and talking about that next time. But also I um, was wondering, Ken, if you have um, any any resources that would be helpful for us to look at in terms of like glare and roadways and whatnot. I do, I do. Uh, majority of the stuff that we dealt with was FAA. The guidelines were, were quite a bit different than in the public world because we, FA likes to draw defined setbacks from, from the structural grid of the airport. So it was really easy for us to just say, this is in the oncoming path and we need it outside of that. Anything within that needs to have a study and have anti-glare uh, film on it and qualify for yeah. such and such regs. So we have an advisory circular that lays out a lot of that stuff to begin with. So when we did our own, it was more or less drawing the lines setting setting apart areas and then we had our our object free zone so i took a look i went down 236 and route four midday and morning just to get an idea i don't come this way often i never really looked to see where the sun was coming in my eyes but uh there is a couple of concerns but uh within this we've got a line of sight and uh and setbacks so it, it kind of covers a lot of it anyway and the only mild concerns are route for a golf course and i don't think they're ever going to say hey let's throw away a thriving business and put up panels on the golf course so <laughs> well, the... i don't know i i don't see it happening in the two areas that i saw that would have been concerned from our point of view from from the airport point of view the only okay. thing I would say as far as aviation FAA, do you guys do medevac? Yeah, we have yep. a medevac pad. The, yeah. The, yeah. That yeah. might be a concern to have a take a look at. Yeah. You, you don't want the pilots getting a glare back, and I don't know how your oncoming path is in that area. That's about it. Uh, 236 and Route 4, very minor concern at all. And if you stick by the setbacks and the, and the uh, uh, non line of sight he's already got in there should be good we'll just check on yeah. on our landing pad and that's it so okay. think... awesome fabulous Thank you, Ken. <laughs> i really yeah. appreciate it yeah I mean, faa sign off i think is you know if it's nowhere near anything then but i think asking for an faa sign off isn't ridiculous i just i think if they're if they're all pointed towards the sun <laughs> right <laughs> there's gonna be glare of some kind <laughs> What? Hey, yeah. I, have a, I have a quick question. Hey, David, as you dig into this, it why is it not allowed in R5 is one of my questions, because that's the only N in table A. Did I see that correctly? Uh, hold like on. That, that's a little counterintuitive. I mean, was it the R5 lobby? Do we have some <laughs> R5ers on, on, right. the, on the meeting? The R5 Agamenicus, though? What? R5 might be Agamenicus. R5 is rural. It's like the way it's the, yeah. you know, north south Berwick, I like to call it. So, yeah, we but didn't that's a lot of sewer facility in the, in the wetlands areas. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, 
I don't know. I just it it yeah. seems to me of all the places maybe that would be a good place to put them is where there's you know a lot of open land and not a lot of stuff going yeah. on. But you know, it's meant to restrict development. It is. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Does it? Are there any last comments on solar before we move on? I just would like to add, Joe. I mean, or Joe, Dave. Do you understand? Like, or do, you, do you have enough information from us to kind of put something together? Yeah, I I think I do, but I also would appreciate uh, more feedback. I I only got feedback from a couple of members, um, and so if I could get people reading through and if there's a section that you just go agree a hundred percent that's great uh some people may not want to talk about it in public i don't know i but at least if i get the ideas from different folks i can put it in the saying these are the issues that came up and why because there's a you know there's a lot of different issues that this this thing touches okay okay so moving on to our next agenda item from bottom to top is the medical marijuana registered caregivers home occupation question. Um, let me just, I'm gonna bring it up on my screen. Or David, can you bring it up in the, and share it? Yeah, I'm hoping that the one that I just pulled up is uh, perhaps didn't have spell check on it, but, but let's see, hold on, let me try and share the switch. <laughs> I'm like, I already, it's it. not spelled that way. So <laughs> let's see. Mm. All right. Am I on there showing you now? And there's a particularly is, is glaring red at you. <laughs> Did you see that? Yep. Okay. We're all on the same page then. Okay. So similar to uh, the solar farms, uh, the town council, uh, this, this actually came up, I should say, uh, start from the beginning. The town council uh, asked the board to look at where commercial growing, marijuana growing uh, activities would be allowed in town or should be allowed in town. The planning board looked at that, came up with some standards for that, and also limited those to the uh, industrial districts, sort of in a, in a nutshell. One of the important things in that um, was, uh, let's see, when that happened is there was a discussion about what is, what would we, tr what would trigger someone growing, say, from their house or when they suddenly become a commercial use. And the definition at that time that uh, for someone who we'd, uh, let's see, this is a whole definition right here. So let's see. Oh, didn't highlight for me. Sorry. There we go. So that is the definition in the town's uh, land use code definition section. And that, if you look online, it is actually in the new ordinance section when you first opened the zoning ordinance. And it says new ordinances, which we've got to fix that, how it's labeled there. So in the definition section of the ordinance that is online, you will not see this definition, but it was adopted by the town council back a few months ago. So um, we'll need to do something like that. But three or more, uh, three or more uh, registered caregivers was the key to that. So that when the people doing caregiving out of the home, growing in their home, we knew that as a starting point, it was less than less than three people allowed to grow in one location, or it's considered a commercial operation in the town's land use code. The other thing that came up is in that definition, it also said the the maximum size of a medical marijuana cultivation growing facility on a single lot of record should be 2,500 square feet of cultivation area. So that was the limit that was put on industrial zones if someone wanted to do a med medical marijuana cultivation growing facility. So with that, the rationale was, okay, so we've got less than three people and it has to be less than 2,500 square feet. We also know that the state limits people to 500 square feet. So if you have 
only two people allowed maximum, and they're each allowed 500 square feet, that really starts as being where your cap would sort of be. So um, that was that was uh, some of the uh, I went through the constraints of the of of the current ordinances in relation to this one. Again, the town council gave an assignment to the planning board, and uh, I will read the whole. We would like to ensure the following items are addressed and trust the planning board to address in the way they see fit, and that is hours of operation, square footage restrictions, odor mitigation, traffic control con control considerations like appointment only and or no drive through. Uh, lighting, signage, any new necessary definitions that are needed or any other definitions that may be triggered by, by this amendment. Uh, the memorandum that I sent out also uh, included some notes and uh, I think there's another underlying consensus is sort of the key moving forward. And um, I tried to list some of the, uh, so currently, this is the current ordinance, minor home occupations. And when we get to major home occupations, there is a definition there, excuse me, there is a section under major home occupations that was quote reserved for future uses in there. Some of the uses that are in the minor definitions for home occupations are also transferred down. But if the board wants, is this going to be reviewed as a home occupation? And there are pros and cons. Um, so that's one item that we should talk about in more detail. Um, and then just going through, I tried to address some of those uh, issues that the, that the town council had raised for the board to address. And I tried to put some standards and what I could, I took sections of the ordinance that are, uh, excuse me, sections of the land use code, the zoning ordinance, and, and applied them in here. So I, I try to make, make things as consistent from one ordinance uh, to the next or by reference do that. So I came up with a couple of things. Um, and one of the things is really what level of review do we want to get it? And I, I keep thinking about this since I've, I've sent it out to folks. And I think the original idea was to, by the, by the council was, yeah, let's submit these things so they don't become these huge commercial uh, lots, but also let people, you know, grow minimum amounts and, and uh, have a business or, or, or what have you. So the more I think about it, a home occupation isn't a bad way to uh, approach it. Um, but again, we can have that debate or, or the, and the board can tell me to write it any way you guys want it. So I underlined a number of things here. And then also I just tra I kept some of these things that were already in the ordinance. And I put a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, items in blue here that sort of said, do we want to regulate this? What about X, Y, and Z? Um, and parking and, and things like that. And the real question is, if it comes down to sort of retail sales, are there going to be allowed retail sales from the house? You can ban that. I sent around today a, a uh, note that I'd gotten back from the town's attorney. Uh, so that's some stuff also to flush out. So rather than be boring you with anything else, I. I I, I sort of wanted to get an idea if I'm on the right sort of direction on this or if where the, where the board would like me to go with this. Um, David, could you just bring up Phil's comments for us to look at? I, I can. Hold on one second. Let me... So... You know, I feel like the big question, the big question that we were all debating at our last meeting was this home occupation, if they should, if they right. should be able to sell. And I've thought about it a lot. And as torn as I am, I just like, I can't, I don't know if I can really say that uh, major home occupation 
make sense when we said no to caregiver stores in those areas. So mm -hmm. I, I personally feel like after reviewing everything, it, does, it only makes sense to me that we do it as a minor home occupation, which would then you know, limit the size. So then all of a sudden, like one of the things that Greg brought up was about production and like then actually making and doing all of the stuff that you do after you grow it, it limits it to 500 square feet on the prime in the primary residence or on an, a, 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 a building that's nearby on the property. Um, no sign, it would be no signs and they wouldn't necessarily be able to sell from, from their home in a normal business way. Mm -hmm. That being said, people have the internet now. People can advertise on the internet if, if they want to tell people where they are. But I just feel like I would rather us have site, site plan reviews still, but for minor home occupations that limit, that limit the size um, within the principal building or a secondary building. So, you know, for making stuff, but also, you know, uh, although I, I hate the idea of preventing somebody from selling from their, from their own home, I feel like we've already made that decision. And that's why we made the overlay zone, if that makes sense. But Greg, you have you had your hand up first, so I'll let you. you beat you to it, Hershey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get Everybody my two cents. Right. Sure. Right. So, I guess a couple things. Um, I, I just want to, you know, go back. It, it, you know, the whole retail sale thing. Uh, Dave is going to bring up. Phil's comment, and I think you're that's going to be item number three, because that actually raises a lot more questions for me than it does answers. So honestly, I don't know if we're going to come to a, 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 a decision on that tonight. However, I guess I would still advocate. There, there's two things, the minor home occupation and major home occupation. Major home occupation requires the site plan review. Now, if the original intent was to look at this industry, this business as kind of a home occupation, I'm gonna go a step further and maybe say that the intent was if they meet the requirements of a home occupation, then it should be just approved by the code enforcement officer. And if we classify it as a major home occupation, I don't think that's really what we're looking to do, getting into what at the end of the day is a smaller scale, you know, uh, issue happening out in any zone in town. Minor home occupation, I, I, I'd like, but I don't know if that itself is the appropriate place. And, what I said last week was, should we consider classifying this as its own use, registered caregiver home occupation? And it's one set of standards. It gives the code enforcement officer a single set of clear directions. The ordinances as they exist now for minor and major, as they exist right now, where where they're, they're, they're really light on any type of standard to begin with. So my concern is if we say it's going to be a minor home occupation, one, we're going to have to open that up and really look at how we regulate them and, and are we affecting any other minor home occupations inadvertently. And because they're light on the standards, where does where does the pendulum land in the terms of when does it go from a minor home occupation to a major home occupation? It's going to become somewhat subjective because there's a lack of standards at this point in time, which from, from my view creates a problem down the road for the town in the sense of 
hey, we think it's a minor home occupation. And well, no, we think it's a major home occupation. And now we got people going at each other's throats and I don't know where, where the appropriate line is for that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to modify and move some of those provisions to minor home occupation because in a minor home occupation, the code enforcement officer approves it. Uh, again, I'm you just- You can site plan reviews. What's but that? I believe you can still, you can still require a site plan review. For a minor home occupation? Yeah. Now, under the ordinance, no. Under the, well, I don't know about site, well, no, it's pretty clear. Major home occupation requires the site plan. A minor does not. I don't know, Joe, can Joe answer that question? Minor does not require a site plan. Major site plan, if it doesn't meet the definition of the major site plan, it goes to planning board. Is there a clean line there, Joe? Like in other no, words, there never was. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Sorry, when what, I look, when I, I was just going to say when I look at it in the minor home occupation, it has a size limitation. Major home occupation does not have a size limitation. So, Greg, ahead. are you all? Are, are Greg, are you? Yeah. Are you, yeah. I, I guess I just wanted to state that case. I, I think there may be merit in having us look at a completely new category and getting rid of this major versus minor home and just create a registered caregiver home occupation. That way it's one item and very clear. That's my own thought. Hershey? So I, I don't disagree with Greg or you, Betsy, that it, I find the regulations a little confusing um, with some amount of overlap and it's hard. It's more like you sort of like establish something at your house and decide which category you fit in as opposed to saying, what does the code say I have to do in following a code? It's sort of a little bit reverse in the way it's supposed to work. And that I find, you know, confusing to begin with. But all that being said, um, there are pieces of each of them, I think, which have merit. And whether we mix and match or carve out exceptions the way David has applied for major home occupations, I don't really care. I, I, I care about sort of the specifics, whichever they end up being in. So, and it seems to me that the major home occupation has more of the specifics that I agree with than the minor one. And let me just go over a few. One is, I don't think everybody who's growing should have to come in for site plan review because partly I think it's an invasion of privacy and that there's a reason we don't have lists of where these people are. And so I don't think people should have to come before the planning board for that reason alone. Um, let me just point out how successful this is and that no one has come before the planning board for a major home occupation. And I'm sure out of our whole town, there are many people doing exactly that who never come before us. So it's not, you know, it's not really a, it's not really successful in the way it's, it's you know, carried out to begin with. So I, I'm not sure what to make of that, except to say, I just think, I, you know, nobody wants to sit here and do planning or review on stuff like this anyway. And so that would be one thing I sort of don't want, but while still having it be in major. The other part is, you know, lots of people run little businesses in the town. We have equestrian facilities where people board horses. We have, you know, all sorts of other stuff that comes under this definition. People who fix cars and rehab cars and people who, you know, have law offices and all sorts of other things. And we don't restrict the size of their barn or their you know, offices, or I don't, I don't see why we need to do that. The state, first of all, if we're going to limit it to two growers, the state already restricts the size of the canopy to 500 square feet. If they want to put in some other 100 square feet or so, or whatever to process it, I don't, it, it's not my business, I feel. That's, you know, that's their land. As long as they're within the setbacks and everything else, I'm not going to tell them how big their office gets to be, or their barn, or the space they're going to work in. Um, and since the land, since the state regulates this already, then we already have a built-in control over how big it's going to be. So the other thing is, you know, these have been legal since 1998. That's, let me do the math in my head, 24 years we have had registered, did I get that right? Registered caregivers in our town growing marijuana without any major problems until now, right? Until we've had one real outlier that's been a problem. And whether it's an enforcement problem or it, you know, whatever happens with that, it's really hard to parse. But I also feel with proper enforcement, this just, it, it 
should not be a problem. And let's fix the few things out there that are a problem, which is I think people coming and going night and day and um, lots of lights and, you know, and outsized buildings. Um, so I'm okay with fixing all those things and regulating it. I think since we're going for licensure, that will be the stick in terms of making sure people follow the rules around these things. But other than that, I, I just don't think we need this level of regulation. You know, it just, it hasn't been a problem. We have a lot of people, we don't have a lot of people we're talking about maybe, I think there's 23 in town of those, very few of them actually are growing in town and they don't seem to have been a nuisance to anybody. So I don't, you know, I just like to get this over with. I know okay. there are, I will say Hershey that there are, um, there are, uh, setbacks for like manure piles at barns from property right. line. There are, there are. Yeah. That's so true. something about David. <laughs> no, that's, and that's fine. Oh, and I'll say one more thing. I, you know, the model for this, when the state sort of formed this before we really got to dealing with it was that they grow it and process most of it wherever they process it, I guess. But, you know, people come and get it. And whether you call that retail or not, I don't know. But if we eliminate that, that one thing, you've just killed all this business. I mean, none of these people will be here then, right? You've put them out of business. This is this, this is the model for how they grow and what they do with it. Some of them sell it to other people, like to other facilities. But since we've limited, you know, to three medical marijuana retail stores, you know, for the majority of these growers, people come and pick up their product. And whether we do it by appointment or, you know, and we limit the hours, I think that's not any different than anybody else's use. So I think it's, this is a lot more like other people's home occupation and businesses than we are allowing for. And in that sense, I don't, I think we should do some more definition, but leave it at that. Okay, I'll shut up now. I'm done. <laughs> David? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I'll, I'll try and feed off of all the comments, but um, yeah, the, the the more I thought about site plan review kind of thing, it, it seemed excessive to me uh, when I think of really what we're trying to regulate, which in general terms doesn't seem to have been a problem in town. So what the hope, I, I think what it's really going to boil down to is having some regulations. I don't think people are going to come, you know, Hershey's not going to wander off the street and say, you know, I'd like to grow some marijuana in my basement for myself. It, it's just not going to happen. He's in my <laughs> basement? Are you kidding? <laughs> but I wish I had room to grow out of my basement. <laughs> well, I, we're talking about probably the town's going to know about it when a problem occurs. And I see a problem occurring most likely because of odor, uh, excessive traffic. Um, really, those, those are the two. Um, I personally don't know how much yield 500 square feet or, you know, and they, they say of, of canopy or whatever. I, I don't know how much that produces or, or how much people would smoke. I don't know what that does. So, I, it, you know, it's a little bit lost on me, but... I do think with some of the state laws, we can uh, it can be regulated. And I did pull up the email that I got from the town attorney earlier. If you wanted me to share that, uh, yes. Thank okay. You. Now, hopefully, it's in my email. Uh, so, so hopefully, you can you guys can all read it. So, let me do this. And let me find my email. That's it right here. Okay. So I had sent uh, uh, Phil who's town's attorney, I'd sent him a draft of this because I want to make sure that the, the town isn't going to end up adopting something that is contrary to the state. Now, as we've talked about before, the town can restrict uses or restrict things about these, these growers and things like that. So what I did is I, I sent the ordinance to him and I showed him the caregiver definition and he made a couple of suggestions about maybe how we better define uh define that you should have all gotten this in your email earlier today as i did and um there was he's pointing out in number two under the new major uh home occupation section some some sections are new and should be underlined and that's really when when i was sort of cutting and pasting kind of thing so that's something i can definitely fix 
uh, the more most important one probably is regarding sales. And he says, uh, regarding sales, you could specifically prohibit and or any retail sales from the site of a home occupation. A caregiver retail store is a quote opt-in category under the Maine Medical Marijuana Act. So if South Berwick has not opted in, an amendment would not be allowed anyway. Uh, anyway, and this at this point, but you may want to make uh, the, it clear in the section. Excuse me, if I could read it, it'd be easier. Sorry, it's been a long day. So, but David, we, if we have opted in because we have medical marrow retail stores, right? And I think we're not talking about when we say a retail store, we mean an actual storefront, right? Which nobody wants to see in it in a neighborhood that isn't commercial, right? Nobody wants you to, even though, you know, we have farm stands and other people have other businesses and maybe have something that looks like an office that you go to. No one wants to see that. I think we all agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you say retail, you know, that's different from a store downtown, right? But these people have to have a way to be able to sell it. And that's what the state of Maine intended when they made registered caregivers, right? Yep. So, I, you know, I just don't see... You know, it'd be like having somebody who has a, 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 you know, I don't know, a tax accountant who does your taxes, but doesn't give you the paperwork at the end. That just seems like <laughs> odd home occupation to me. So, Greg. So I guess I sent Dave earlier after reading that email, uh, kind of a series of questions. And that I know no one can really answer right now. And it's maybe more directed at Phil and, and maybe they're more statements than questions, but does I can read that particular item a couple of different ways and I'm not really sure how to read it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I'm making the assumption that the attorney knows that we have opted in because we have the medical storefronts. So I, you know, so I saw his response to be a little bit odd, which made me question, is there a whole different separate category here uh, for a caregiver retail store, something that, I'm, that we're not aware of? Uh, or is the caregiver retail sale the same as a, the storefront? Are, are they one and of the same? I just found his email to be a little bit confusing. And if we have a medical storefront, where we said, hey, you can sell your product in the storefront over here. Does that now by default say for this ordinance, because you said it can have the retail has to happen over here, by default, you can't have retail uh, as a function of a home occupation. And I know I'm not looking for an answer. I just I looked at that and it kind of raised a a, a, a question for me, you know, again, you know that I'm right. not in favor of retail sales. So my interpretation would be wonderful, but I don't know if that is, you know. Right. I, the, the way I read it, and I actually just had it up again, and then I pulled your email up. So I'm sort of popping back and forth here. Um, but I took it as, uh, let's see this. Hold on, I'm trying to find that one so I can pull it back up here. You're in here somewhere. Sorry, I was try trying to pull up uh, Phil's email again. But my, what I took away from it is the planning board could say no sales. Okay, so um, I, 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 that's the way I, I, I read it. Uh, and I wish I had the exact language. I'll keep looking for it. But um you want me to put it up i think i have it up if, yeah if you had uh i think i just found it again. yeah i think i just found it again too so if you if you have it hershey that'd be great sure hold on one sec is that it you got it there you go <clears throat> Oh, okay. It doesn't work sometimes if I plug it in afterwards. Yeah, so item three was uh, was regarding sales. You could, you could specifically prohibit and or any retail sales from the site of a home occupation. 
So that would say to me, you could just say no retail sales, period. Right. Um, I guess I'm, I'm reading the second part. A caregiver retail store is an opt-in category under the Medical Marijuana Act. So if South Berwick has not opted in, which we know we have, such an establishment would not be allowed anyway at, right. at this point, but you may want to make this clear. I guess I'm just finding that confusing and maybe I'm overthinking it. Right. Well, we, we, and, 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 and also, Greg, I agree that it, it, he says a retail store, and I actually think that a medical marijuana retail store has a different definition from a registered caregiver selling from their property, I guess. So I don't know if, if that's true or not, but that's a good question to follow up with, Bill. <clears throat> Yo? Yeah, I, 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 I think we may want to seek just a little bit of clarity. Is there a difference between a caregiver retail versus a medical storefront, like our ordinance says? So David, you'll uh, take and care. I, I, yeah, I can get some clarification on that. And, and really it's, it's really when that transaction takes place. And where I start looking at it is, okay, I, I have a tax attorney. Actually, we do it all line, uh, pretty much online <laughs> these days, but um, I have a tax attorney and at the end of the day, I would go in there and she would go, here's my taxes. And I'd go over the taxes or my wife would go over the taxes and say, sign here. And then we'd go over the taxes, we'd sign them, we'd give her a check for her services. You know, she's working out of an office, but I have had tax attorneys who've worked out of their home. Is that transaction taking place? I, I, I think the real thing is, if someone comes in, uh, how, how I imagine the ordinance working, the more and more I think about it is you can ask for a basic site plan. I'm not talking topography and all of this stuff, but if someone wanted to grow marijuana at their house, they, uh, as, as a caregiver, let's, let's be sure here, um, and they wanted to put up a barn, we should talk about accessory buildings and things like that. What's big, what's too big. Again, you've got that state regulation already in place. Um, but it's really the, the traffic and the odor, I think it's going to come down to, I mean, if someone's, and maybe, you know, I, I'm probably in my neighborhood, I live at a flat, maybe not, maybe one of my neighbors is growing pot in their basement and giving it or selling it to their friends. I have no idea, but I think if you start looking at traffic generation, um, I, I mentioned to Hershey, uh, before that, uh, home daycare just opened up around the street for me. Now they don't come down my street, they turn right before, but I, there is a definite increase in traffic. Now she's a home daycare, she can have up to 12 people. As a home daycare under Main State law, how much traffic does that generate? And yes, they have to go through a planning board process. And I, I, I really don't think we're getting there. I don't, you know, it, you, you could say you're not allowed sales, but you know, how can you prove it? I think if you start having a really what is a retail operation where people are coming and going all hours of the day and night, um, sure. I, you know, I think that's a real, I think that is a problem because it's no longer functioning as a residential unit. But if this sort of ancillary sales goes on and it's, you know, again, I don't really know how much 500 square feet grows. 500 square feet to me is a pretty sizable area. You know, that's, but I don't know what that yields after drying or whatever. And if there's two, there's two people, it can be up to a thousand. Right. So we have to say that in the ordinance though, Betsy. We, but we, <laughs> so for home occupations, we don't, there's already a size restriction for minor and we don't restrict in other ways. Like, you know, there's all sorts of, other things allowed in residential areas and home occupations where people can build a building, a barn, sheds, all sorts of things. We have a woodworker behind my house who has a huge shed and then two or three other outbuildings to put his equipment in. And, you know, it doesn't impact me. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, he saws things there occasionally, but I don't know why this is so different when it comes to marijuana. I mean, I sort of do and I sort of don't. 
since there's been a problem on Gunkwood Road, I think licensure is the big difference. And I think that will give us a way to deal with people and enforce things when there are problems. But uh, once again, there hasn't been this ongoing problem in our town about this, except for one outlier. So I, I don't know what we're trying to fix. So, you know, I I, I'm big on I, regulation. I'm, I'm just not big on- Percy, <laughs> I'm happy to entertain a motion that, you know, to make this kind of decision on if we make it a separate, if we leave it. Because right now we're, I feel like we're, we're about to go in circles. So mm -hmm. I just want to either, I want to, I want us to sit on it till the next meeting, or I want a motion to be made and for, for us to take a vote and see where everybody lay, is lying at this point. But actually, you know, before that, we have not heard from Brunel or Ken. And would either of you guys like to speak, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great with a big screen. We get to watch the show. It's. Uh, <laughs> I'm just learning. You guys have had your feet in this this particular item for quite a while, so um, I I see both sides. Uh, I see exactly where Greg is landing, and uh, I I would like to see. Yeah, like I said before last meeting, well, my concern is for the neighbor, uh, not so much the individual and the person doing the business. It's it's to to protect the neighbor from the from the burden and uh, whether it's setbacks, site site review. Uh, that's my biggest concern. I'd say. I don't think limiting the size, if the state's already has regulations in place for that, um, I don't think limiting the size is the actual way to do it. Uh, I think it would be the, the individual uh, residents, more or less, the personal view. Great. Thank you, Ken. Bernal, do you have I anything? Have a I, I, I do have a question. I wasn't going to. I was going to let it go here for right now, but since I've got the floor, <laughs> I'm going to uh, what, what is the significance of the <clears throat> number of people that, that, that this is based on? Why is, why is that in there? Because um, you're legally allowed to have 500 square feet per registered caregiver. And so what we said is we don't want people, uh, a family, say there's a husband, a wife, and two sons that all live at that house. And now all four of them can have 500 square feet. And now all of a sudden there's one property with 2000 square feet of canopy. So what, what we did was we said, well, two people can be on one property having the 500 square feet. But anything more than that, we need to review it because that's just too large of a, a large of a canopy. Does that make I sense? Hear, I hear this 500 foot ratio, it's a state thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay thank you. <laughs> Greg? Yeah. So, I, I'm going to go back and, and I guess for purposes of this conversation, because you're right, I think we're going to kind of start going in some circles here. The town council gave us a set of restrictions and before maybe the way we want to talk about this is before we even talk about home, you know, what level of home occupation, minor or major or completely separate, maybe we just need to kind of resolve a couple other key items that it doesn't really matter where it goes because it's gonna be the same depending on where we put it. And I think that one of the big issues of course is the, the, the sale of the item that's garnered a lot of conversation. You know, there's delivery, there is uh, uh, appointment only, then there's the on-premise retail sale. Uh, and the other item of course is the size. And so, you know, I want to have that conversation about the accessory structure. And, and I would go as far as saying that I think it needs to be limited to a thousand square feet cumulatively uh, for the entire lot. Uh, so, you know, that, that's, that to me would meet the town council's charge. Uh, you know, at, 
a thousand square feet cumulatively on the lot. That includes all the accessory structures. I got to go with my cord. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I would call yeah, have music. some some sort of background music during like the intermission. I was just I was just I was just admiring his window treatment actually. <laughs> is it one of the? Is it a fake backdrop or is it a real? Backdrop? Yeah, that's a good question. You start doing that. <laughs> I have everybody looking for it. Don't know where. It <laughs> so that could be a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll end up under someone's bed. So I'm just, you know, I think if we can resolve, I'm going to need the uh, another case that is in here. The power strip. You can have other conversation while I do this. You don't have to wait for me. Well, so can I, can I well, uh, let's, take, let's take Greg's approach to tick things off. So we all agreed that there had to be some restriction on hours. And I, I don't remember what it was, eight to six or eight to seven, right? I think we, we came up with something that sounded like sort of normalish business hours of a little, an hour on each end of maybe if you're working nine to five-ish, right? Mm -hmm. So that's gone. We already have a light ordinance. So I don't really think we need something that, discusses light. I think we discussed the signage. There's already some restrictions around signage already. Um, I, I personally feel like odor mitigation is, is only an issue when it affects an abutter and it's become a real problem. And then I think there should be redress and you should be able to put in, have to put in a, a system only if your abutter is affected by it and complains for sure. Um, but asking somebody to put you know, something in their hoop house or a barn or a basement when there isn't a problem and you're on 20 acres seems a little silly to me. So I, I would say there has to be some wording that, that, that there has to be regress if it becomes a problem. Um, and then I guess, you know, size wise, I would just say, you know, if you live on a 20 acre property and you go down a dirt road and you can't be seen from the street and you would have put it in a barn that's 1500 square feet, I couldn't care less, you know, and have other outbuildings. We have neighbors all around us who have barns and sheds and other types of outbuildings and accessory dwelling units that have gone up. And I just don't see how they impact anybody. The neighborhood is not, you know, it's, you know, it's rural life. And I just, you know, you need more than a thousand square feet if you're allowed a thousand square feet of canopy. You need to be able to walk around. You need to have a table. You need to, you know, you're, you're basically trying to just, you know, zone them out of existence. And that doesn't seem quite fair to me. Greg, do you have your charger now? Yeah, I do. Okay, so charge ahead. <laughs> so I'm not really sure, you know, where, where we'll go with this, but I'm hoping we can kind of concentrate on this. I have a little bit of a different take um, in, in why I think we need to, to, you know, look at a size restriction. You know, my view of the medical cultivation piece or the industrial stuff, uh, you know, limits to three or more caregivers, not in their primary residence. And so to me, that means that we can have a lot more than just two caregivers in every other zone in town. I think we can have three, four, and five, which Betsy gets to your issue that you were mentioning before, of uh, you know, 2,500 square feet. Again, I, I go back and I look at, this is a business. They get licensed from the state to sell marijuana. And I look at the compatible use within a residential neighborhood. And I'm not going to disagree with what you're saying, Hershey. There is a difference. If you have 40 acres and you're in the middle of your 40 acres, I don't know how we regulate that. Uh, we can't do setbacks because setbacks aren't going to work in a lot of areas in town. Um, so it really comes down to the only way to regulate really is the size restriction. Um, but I don't, I don't, what, what are we regulating exactly? What is the need to regulate? 
the state regulates them it up up the wazoo you would believe the amount of stuff the states regulates yeah. what are we trying to regulate just that someone can put a barn on their property everybody can do that no, well, and there are setbacks in place in our zoning code there are already setbacks about how big something could be and where you can put it and minimum and maximum there's a lot of standards we already have around zoning and building that are universal that have nothing to do with whether we're regulating caregivers I think what we're trying to regulate are the ways they have already become a nuisance on one place on a gunko road. So let's do that and let's like move on. Well, I, 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 I guess I'm not entirely sharing your train of thought on that. And it's not a problem until it is. And so we're being asked to do something from the town council with a charge and come up with size limitations and you know, having listened to those conversations from the town council, that's what they're going to be expecting. And so, again, I'm just going to go back and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to hear from other people uh, and, and before I put it into a motion, but I would say for purposes of moving on, you know, for conversation, I would say, again, a thousand square feet cumulatively per lot. Why? Why a thousand square feet? Why not a hundred and why not a fifteen hundred square feet? Like where are they supposed to work, and where are they supposed to store things, and where are they? I you know I I just other home occupations don't have this limit on them. The guy with the garage down the street no, they put do. on a second. He he no, <laughs> you know, five hundred so, square feet right there. You know, well, so. they're but they're allowed. If we're allowing two caregivers, we're saying that they can have a thousand square feet of canopy, and that means they're going to probably need a little more room than a thousand square feet. No, just practically speaking, no. Well, I mean, you know, so again, I'm I'm, I'm throwing that out there for conversation, and, and yeah. so it's a lot of different number. You know, I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah, I mean, I would like. I mean. I would say either fifteen hundred or two thousand. Yeah, I think that's getting. I think that's getting a little bit large. That's. Well, I, if you think about if they have a thousand square feet of canopy, that also gives them a thousand square feet for any materials that they have, tables, like space to work. So, so at what point does the does the principal use of the structure become overlooked if you start saying 2,000 square feet if, if a home occupation is supposed to be incidental to the primary use, which is residential, you know, at what point does that overtake that? And so, you know, we have limitations as a guide here under at least a minor home occupation that says 25% of the gross floor area or 500 square feet, you know, again, if you can do that within a principal structure, more power to you. But if you're going to have someone building a two or three or four bay garage and having the canopy in there, along with the you know production and some you know processing of marijuana products, that that's that becomes perhaps potentially a lot more intrusive on neighbors. And so again, I look at the smaller the less likely we're, we have to worry about any of the odor or the traffic or those other things that can potentially, you know, get out of control. But all, but all of this is already limited by a 500 foot canopy and two growers we're allowing, and that's it. I mean, it already has a set limit. No one's gonna build a 5,000 square foot building when they don't need it. It costs money. Or, you know, or they're going to use an existing building on the property. Most people don't have the money to put out capital um, to, you know, to build new facilities when they're not industrial size, right? These are, these are people who are just growing on their property, right? So, you know, a barn, a barn is like $40,000, right? To build a little barn with maybe six horse stalls, right? What's the size of our barn, please? 40 by 40? No. 36 by 36. So we, you know, that would be like, I don't know, 50, 60, $70,000 to build. I don't know anybody who's going to build something like that. You know, and, you know, we put a horse on our property that's 36 by 36 and it's pretty substantial, but you know, it's not impacting anybody. I just, I just, this issue over how big it's going to get or what size it's going to be. It's just, to me, it's not the thing we should be thinking about worrying about and regulating. Like, I think 
David is correct that, you know, odor is an issue and can be and can really annoy a butters. And, you know, neighbors are going to be really troubled by traffic if that becomes an issue, though I haven't heard of that being an issue. And, you know, people get to build things on their property. You're not allowed to sort of have a taking of what they can and cannot build if it's within the code. Right, but we're talking about business, business happening. So if I'm going to build a garage, that's a little bit different than me building a garage and putting a business in a operating a business out of that a little but, bit but we have but people do run businesses all through residential properties here we have a guy down the street who has a huge drywall operation and has a huge building he got to build an industrial building on his property whether i thought it was a great idea or not i can't say but he was allowed to do that not a big impact on the neighbors not sure everybody was happy about it not in character maybe but you know so that's, he's that's, running a business in a residential neighborhood I guess that's why I'm kind of getting into a convert, you know, the conversation of do, should we have this be completely separate from the minor and the major, you know? I don't, I don't, I just don't see why we would. If, if the point is to regulate the things that we anticipate or we think will be a problem or are a problem, there's no reason we can't just stick in extra rules in the home occupation section. I, you Which, know, why, why are we, so I yeah. start from scratch and rewrite it. So I, maybe the motion we want to make is to decide which direction that will be in, whether we have a new separate section, a minor home occupation with modifications or, or a major one with modifications, right? And like okay. I say- let me, let, me, let me ask a question on that. If I can put someone on the spot, Joe, what's your thought on that? You're going to be doing it. Well, like you said, it, it's how it's worded. If it's defined, you know, the proper way and the lawyers can look at it and have to, you know, put their two cents in. And if there's no gray areas, then it shouldn't be a big deal. I, I, I would rather have it on a separate article anyway, based on the fact that now we know that that's what it is. It's not a minor home occupation. It's not this. It's growing of medical marijuana for caregivers. That's the way I look at it. I'm just taking everything in from what everyone said. <laughs> There's a lot. I will say that I'm I'm leaning to a separate, a separate one. Um so I think at this point, I'll entertain a motion for, you know, for a decision. That being said, if we can't, if we don't have votes for a decision, then I say we table it and we come back to it at our next meeting. Can we hear uh, more? Does anyone else want to talk? You know, the Burnell and Ken? I would say at this point that uh, there's still some, uh, noodling that has to be done on this before we come to a motion to uh, think about this a little bit more before it's actually put down if we and, and, and get a motion and pass a motion on this and have to change it later or whatever. Well, the point, the point of the motion is just is really to see, I mean, are we all, in the, do we actually have a consensus or do we not? And if we don't, if we don't have a vote, you know, if we don't have a second, then we know we can table it. If that makes sense. Does anybody else? Well, let me that? just, when I say kind of developing its own separate one, I mean, everything that Dave has created just gets copied and pasted yeah. over with just simply a new title. I, we're not starting from scratch. We can use a lot, most everything that he's created. Again, I think the bigger issues are the sales. And I haven't heard any, a lot of conversation on that really and you know I'm, I'm willing to listen but then again you know the overall size limitation uh, if, David, we, if, if we think that. it's two then it's a thousand square feet what do we want to do about all that extra stuff you know I get the walkway issue and what you're saying I understand what you're saying with that Hershey you know people people can build a barn on their property of a certain size, whether they're growing marijuana or not. I just don't see why this is different. It just seems like we're throwing a lot of regulation onto a problem that isn't a problem. And, you know, we can anticipate all sorts of problems that we want to regulate in town, and we don't make up 
new zoning code around it. There's been a problem in Agunquit Road. Let's talk about what the problems were. Let's fix those problems and, you know, let's get it done. Well, so, I don't know if we can fix Agunquit Road. I think we need to look at this proactively and say. Right. And I'm saying whatever the problems were that people didn't like about that, let's talk about what those problems were and fix those problems so we don't have them again. Whatever that issue is. So Which if it's trying it to was, hear. It was traffic. It was to some extent, you know, signage I heard. There were signage that had to get taken down. There was lights all night. There's Lighting, a lot of coming, uh, and, coming and going. And a lot uh, of that actually we have in our code and we can fix now in this. So, so I'm just gonna- I'm going with the size stop, limitation. <laughs> stop everybody there for a second. This is where I feel like we're at. And, you know, David, you can, can tell me how you, if you if you agree or not, but I feel like until we we either need to decide that it's going to be a minor minor or major home occupation, and we're sticking to the the table for the and the definitions and everything for that, or we need to make a separate one and really hash out those things that Hershey's talking about in terms of odor and traffic and consider size, which sure. Greg is. Greg uh, wants to consider. Uh, and until we do that, I feel like we can't really move forward. I don't know. David, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I think there's some things I may be able to do to sort of help work through these things. Um, and I I agree with everything that's that's been said. I think that I think the council and the board recognizes that there was a problem and how could we prevent that from happening again? And also making sure that, you know, I, you know, protecting the people who live there. And so we just need to sort of tighten this thing up. So it's, it's not a retail store. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, you, you, it is, you know, we need to treat it like it's, it's any other sort of home occupation. You might have people coming there. You might have people going there. Um, one town that I was working in was specifically said you could not have any retail sales. This guy was a, I can't remember the name of it. It's got an official name, but he's the person you could take your gun to and you could sell it to him and he could sell it to the third party sort of certifying, but cash was trading place, uh, exchanging places and that town took him, you know, said you can't do that and wouldn't allow it. So, um, I'd be for that. I'd be for that too. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What money changing hands or just no go, gun right? sales? Oh, okay. No, I'm, that's a whole I'm, other I'm discussion. Saying, it's that whole yeah. money uh, changing hands. Also, I think as with any home occupation that would come in, um, maybe I use some of the language that I've looked at as, as being a little bit, you know, site plan. When I was envisioning a site plan for a minor uh, 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 this use, I was kind of thinking minor, uh, minor home occupation. But as part of that minor home occupation, frankly, for every use that wants to do a home occupation, um, would come in and they fill out sort of an application. They say, hey, here's what I'm interested in Joe doing. And Joe would look at it as a code officer and says, yeah, this meets the criteria for home occupation. Oh, you're a, you're a caregiver. You're going to grow a little bit in your house. Here's the things we're going to be worried about. Odor, people coming to your house to buy product. Um, it can't be a store, blah, blah, blah. And the person sort of signs their application. If they can fall within the criteria, it just gets approved at a, at a, at a staff level. I didn't envision any of these types of uses. And, and maybe I, I thought the purpose that the, the directive that came from the, from the town council was, yeah, these things are out there. We should sort of look at regulations to see what we should or what the board should and should not allow, but really not get them into an overly regulatory process. Because once you're in the, an overly regulatory process, you're sort of going, well, you're a commercial use. Now, someone's using their unused bathroom to grow marijuana or something for their home use. You know, who cares, frankly, but, you know, but when that starts getting into, I, I, I do see the concern with the size of an accessory structure. But I've also had people in my career who've said, I'm building a seven car garage. And you go, really? <laughs> and then, you know, and sometimes there was a car collector 
and he actually built the seven car garage for a or nine car garage whatever it was for a car collection then you think okay he he moves out of his beautiful house someone else buys the property and they go i don't have seven you know luxury mercedes to show off i'm gonna then do this so you know accessory structures like hershey said you're allowed to build them and you come in and say i want to build something to hold all my kids ski dudes and what have you you're allowed to do that and it's really you know really to, to me it's sort of the odor traffic and the appearance of a residential home you know some of my neighbors have people coming and going all day i i don't leave the house a lot i work from home as does my wife so we get an airing once or twice a week but we don't also have people coming to our house very often but if someone's constantly going, I can see how a neighborhood wouldn't like that. And I think the first to, you know, protect the person who wants to do it, their identity don't require major public hearing or any kind of thing on this type of thing. Okay. And really draft it that if a problem comes up, you have some ordinances where Joe goes, hey, I got a complaint about X, Y, and Z. They're going to put in some kind of air filtration system and that should clear up the problem if it does joe never sees him again he goes thank you for making fixing that problem yeah so i'm gonna i'm going to uh say we table this until the next meeting and give everybody time to review again um the documents um and we'll come back and hopefully we someone can make a motion at our next meeting regarding how we wanted to clarify. Yes, Hershey. So I, I assume though David is going to take another pass at this, it sounds like. Yes. If if that's what okay. you'd like me to do, sure. I and also you're... welcome emails um from everyone, but as a reminder, as a board member, if you are going to send me comments on an item, uh just send it directly to me do not copy the entire board because the board cannot be discussing items in writing or anything you can talk to me directly you can call joe directly you can call amy or if a board member wants to maybe talk to another board member but we just don't want to start a communication on this so if you have comments and you just say i do not want retail sales that helps me or if you say yes you know sort of a little retail on the side isn't a bad deal as long as i get a feel for the collective feeling of the, the board that I could put that into a, you know, I had three people who said no way in heck retail sales. I had one person who says, who cares how much they grow or whatever. I, at least it helps me gauge where we're at. And, yep. and, and I, I always have to say it, an option for the planning board also is if this isn't a problem, you could always say, send it back to the town council and say, the planning board as a whole do not think this is a problem. Having come from the town council, and I think as there's been so much debate amongst ourselves, I think it does need to be looked at, you know? Okay. So okay. with that being said, um, we're gonna- My motion to adjourn. <laughs> Are there any are there any member comments <laughs> that do not have to do with medical marijuana? <laughs> I'm going to start smoking right You're now because I cannot take this anymore. <laughs> I'm going to start using marijuana and I never have, but this is driving me to it. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> For medical reasons, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time in a in a blue haze, Hershey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be coughing. I won't be able to talk. Was there a second to that motion, by the way? No. Mm -hmm. Somebody second it, please. Second. I'll second that. <laughs> Here you a second. Uh, no, Hershey? What? Hershey? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Ken Conley. Aye. Cornell Bailey. I would, like, I would like to put on the agenda not using Robert's rules of order anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have my Quaker friends come in and do a training about having a meeting without Robert's rules and how much you can do that. Oh my gosh. Okay, good night. Good night. Oh. Try the meatloaf. I'm here all week, folks. <laughs> hey, bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.